Pranasyedam vashe sarvam Tridive yat pratishthitam Mateva putra narakshasva Shrishcha pragnyamscha videhi naiti Namaste everyone. I am Swarupa, a yoga enthusiast and a proud student of Yoga Vijnana. On behalf of Yoga Vijnana Foundation, I extend a heartly welcome to all those present here for the Pranam Brahman talk series. We are delighted to have Dr. Shishir Prasad as our honorable guest speaker this evening and looking forward to an enlightening session on the topic Murma and Prana concepts and clinical application. But first, I would like to give a brief introduction about the center, the foundation, and the guest speaker of today. Yoga Vignana, Center of Yoga, Therapy, and Research was started in December 2012 by, by Sri Vinay Siddhaya, an ex-IT professional who left 12 plus years of corporate career with the intention of bringing science and philosophy together and sharing the science of yoga to the common man in the simplest way. At, the, at Yoga Vignana, we believe in the experiential journey towards one's spiritual growth and so far over 2000 practitioners across the world have benefited from various programs. Apart from the regular classes that are conducted online and in the center, we specialize in yoga therapy, conduct many in-depth yoga and health workshops for seekers and yoga teachers, meditation classes, yoga retreats, and silent treks, and many more activities are also conducted. Yoga Vignana Foundation is a non-profit organization under Yoga Vignana, which has been set up with the idea of making a society better place through spreading the science of yoga. Three main categories of activities that we plan to undertake under Yoga Vignana Foundation are spreading the knowledge of yoga, holistic education, yogic education. The main aim of the foundation is to make the knowledge of yoga and health accessible to as many people as possible and intends to cover such as orphanage, old age and other places. In accordance with the vision of foundation, we have now arranged talk series like Prana Brahman, which means Prana is Brahman. In these talks, we, we will try to unlock the secrets of Prana from different perspectives. This is the fourth session of this series. If anyone has missed any of the sessions, they can go back and check in Yoga Nana channel. It is my privilege to introduce today's guest speaker, Dr. Shishir Prasad, to you all. Dr. Shishir Prasad is an associate professor in the department, department of Shalya Tantra, Uttarakhand Ayurvedic University, Dehradun, and founder president at the International Marma Science and Yoga Foundation, Dehradun. He is an expert committee member in Marma Therapy, CCRAS, Government of India. He is also a panel expert and author of Ayush in the Introductory Curriculum Development for MBBS graduates of AIMS, Rishikesh, India. He prestigiously owns a clinical experience in the field of Shalya Tantra, surgery of more than 15 years. He has been a jury member in the National Biomedical Research Com Competition organized by AIMS Research uh, Rishikesh and PGI Chandigarh. His list of achievements includes appreciation by the World Association of Former United Nations Interns and Fellows, UN Headquarters, 
New York and valued assistance in organizing the very first live surgical workshop related to varicose veins, varicose veins at Ames, Rishikesh, India. Conducting Ayurveda and Marma therapy workshops, guest lectures at Indian Embassy in Tel Aviv, Israel and Hague in Netherlands. Dr. Shishi Prasad has also trained doctors, students and healthcare workers from more than 20 states and union territories in India, along with all the government Ayurveda medical officers and researchers with paramedical staffs of Nepal. Winning, here, winning the best paper award at IEEE International College Conference, Bangalore 2020. With this brief introduction, I would welcome you all again to the talk and hand over to Shishir Prasad. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Rupaji. I think uh, it's for Rupaji. Yeah. And uh, thanks, uh, Vinay. Uh, thanks, uh, Yoga Foundation, Yoga Vigyan Foundation, for inviting me and uh, giving me the opportunity to present my share of clinical. Uh, Four years back, I was there in Bangalore with uh, Vinay to conduct one of the practical marmal therapy session or marmal workshop. For, it was a two-day session and well attended and uh, was well appreciated by many people. And it's really great to be back on the Yoga Vigyana Foundation and uh, share my uh, experiences with marmas. I'm going to share my screen and uh, share a slide. The topic of today's session is Marma Science and Pran Concepts and Clinical Applicability. If we go and see the historical background of uh, Marmas, the first reference of uh, Marma has come in Rig Veda, where the term Varmam is used. And it is mentioned in the context that you have to wear certain protective cover so that uh, more injury is important points and uh, there are other references of Varmam uh, Upanishad and various scribes uh, in Siddha as well as the yoga uh, literatures <coughs> there was a Ved which is which was called as Suchi Ved and it was uh, mentioned about uh, the different puncture or the needle use of needles and uh, however this uh, book is not available nowadays uh, but the references has come that uh, this book was available in the earlier days there's a very vast description of uh, varmam in siddha science and especially prevalent in southern indian states and they have described the varmam in uh, therapeutic aspects and also based on these uh, varmam, the science of kalari or the kalari payattu, the martial art developed. And uh, there are references that many of the Buddhists traveled from India to different other places and introduced this form of uh, martial arts. And actually this formed the uh, basis of many other forms of martial arts in other countries around the globe. In Ayurveda, we have the references of uh, Marmas in different chapters, in different Sanghitas. Uh, the main Sanghitas uh, where the references have come are Charak, Sushrut, and Vagbhat. And of course, Sushrut has mentioned about uh, the 
marmas uh, in more detail uh, and the exact location and uh, their types and their uh, resultant of injury and their uh, and their locations and all those have been very well mentioned uh, by Acharya Sushrut. If we come to see marma science in Ayurveda, it is mentioned Mrumanin, Jeevasthane, Sandhisthane, Tatparicha. Here, ma means pran or vayu and rape denotes house or seat. So, marmas are the seat of pran. Sashrut has also mentioned marmani nam maans sirasnayu asthi sandhi sanni patah teshu subhaviva pranah tishtha. That means by nature, pran resides at marma sites. So. so that is why marmas are considered as very, very important vital energy points. And here they have used uh, prana. So this means that, uh, that it is not just the prana vat, but the vadash prana that Sushrut has described. Right. So, Maras are considered as the seat of those Dwadash or 12 Prana. It has also been mentioned that uh, Maryanti Iti Marmani. So that means if there is any severe injury on those Marma sites, then it can be fatal. Besides Sushrut, Ashtang Sangra has also mentioned Apicha Maran Karitvat Marma. That means same thing that if there is any severe injury, on the marma side, that then it can lead to fatality. So this means that uh, the acharyas uh, had this in, uh, had this in mind that uh, we have to protect those uh, marma points. And Sushrut especially mentioned these in the context that when you are doing surgical intervention, that then these marmas are to be protected so that we don't cause uh, any injury on them. And even even in modern day surgery, you you see there are certain vitals vital vessels that you need to protect while performing sur surgeries. There are certain places where you can give incisions, certain places where you cannot give incisions. So uh, these are important of which the Acharya was uh, of the opinion. Uh, uh, sorry, doctor, I think your uh, voice is breaking. OK. <clears throat> Yeah. I think maybe the network okay. issue, I think uh, but we are mm -hmm. like we are not able to hear your voice. Oh, uh, is it okay now? Yeah, let's go ahead okay. and see how it goes. Okay, so the importance of uh, marmas as described by Sushrut is that the marmas can, are considered as Shallivisham uh, Ardhamudaranti. That means half of the surgical signs uh, should be, should, marmas are considered. Right. So that is uh, the importance that Acharya Sushrut gave to Marmas. By Dvadash Prana, these are the Prana that Sushrut has mentioned that Agni, Som, Vayu, Sattva, Raja, Tama. Agni, Som, Vayu can also be correlated with the Tridosh. Sattva, Raja, Tama are uh, Manoguna. Raja and Tamad are considered as dosha. Sattva is the pure form, so they are not considered as dosha. Panchendriya are the, the five sense organ, and Bhutatma, the soul or the you know, consciousness. So you can see that uh, all of uh, uh, these reside in all the cells. So the prana that uh, is mentioned here is uh, lying deep at the cellular level. Besides the, the, the marmas that Sushrut has described, there are actually 107. But out of those 107 marmas, there are seven marmas which are considered as mahamarm. And these mahamarm can also be correlated with the, uh, with the corresponding chakras. So those marmas which are in the central region of the body and directly related to the corresponding chakras, they are considered as Mahamarmas, and so this is the opinion of Ashtang Sangra. Here, Ashtang Sangra has mentioned Dash Pranayata Nami, Murdha, Jehva, Murdha, you can see the upper region, Jehva, tongue, cunt, neck, hidai, heart, Nabi is the umbilical region, 
basti guda shukram ojo ojo immunity we consider raktam is blood esham adhyayani sapt punar mahamarma sangyani so uh, out of these uh, dash pranayatan the seat of the site of the uh, prana or the, the prana main res uh, resides at so out of those uh, 10 7 are considered as uh, maha marma in atharvaved also it is mentioned prana prana praja anuvast anuvaste pita putra me priyam prano hi sarvachcha ishvaro the total 10 types of vat in yoga and uh, out of uh, those 10 types of vat five are same as described in ayurved however there are five more types or sub types of vat in yoga that is naga kurum krikala devdatta and dhananjay so those who are actually yoga practitioner they will be actually be better able to describe these in more detail but uh, uh, in ayurved what we consider this pran udan saman vyan and apan so these are the five main vat and out of these five main vat the pran is considered as the uh, most foremost of them right and uh, <coughs> all of Uh, the functions of the other five uh, sub types of vat in yoga they are actually um, you can say uh, represented or is uh, involved in the functions described in in the ayurveda that is the five pran udan pran udan saman vyana pan there are lot of ref- uh, synergism or you can say a lot of interrelations or correlations in marm and uh, yog and it is mentioned in one of the shlok here in shandali upanishad where they have mentioned ashtadasheshu marm sthaneshu pramath dharanam pratyahara we all know that there are ashtang yog so what pratyahar is one of the kriya uh, one of the part uh, one of the uh, part of uh, yog so here they are saying ashtadasheshu marma sthaneshu kramat dharanam pratyahara that is pratyahara is establishing direct connections between inner conscience with the divine current present at the marma points by the process of doing dharana on 18 marma sides and vashish sangita goes on to further expand it and say that pratyaharam prashasansi sanyuta yogina sada अष्टादशेशु यदवायुर मर्म स्थानेशु धारणम स्थानात स्थानात संकृष्य प्रत्याहार सच उत्तम सो हियर दे आर सेइंग दैट ग्रेजुअली वी शुड ट्राई टू फोकस आवर एनर्जी ऑन ईच ऑफ दीस 18 मर्म साइट्स क्रम क्रमात क्रमा दैट मींस वन बाय वन सो दिस दिस क्रिया has been utilized in uh, what is becoming more and more famous in the west where they have used uh, yog nidra and uh, quite famous uh, in many places and the concept of that has actually developed from this uh, shloka right because in there also you are trying to focus your energy on the uh, lower chakras and then going up to the higher region and similarly lower you can you can do the same on the on the lower marma sites or the marma sites in the extremities first and then gradually rise up to the sahasra sar chakra and that the process of uh, is called as pratyahara so here it is trying to focus your pran on each marma site while doing the breathing exercises as and as it is in pratyahara focusing of pranic energy on the marma site energizes each of them so these are the locations of the marmas uh, as described by vashisht sanghita and uh, there are these are the corresponding marma sites as described by our acharyas in ayurvedic literature so the term that has come in vashisht sanghita padangusht similar to that we have the chepram for gulf gulf is the term which is used in vashish uh, sangita and gulf is another term which is which is also used in sushrut sangita pindika madhya is correlated with indrasti marma pindika madhya is uh, in, you can say in between the uh, in in between the knee and the foot then janu mool or janu the both of them are uh, coming under the janu marma of ayurved then uru madhya and so on so you can see there are all of these 
marmocytes have their specific corresponding marmum size described and uh, on on these 18 has to do this uh, dhyana kriya or uh, try to focus your energy do, do you can so do simple anulom lom and try to focus the energy on the on these marma sites and uh, energize them one by one so what we see is there is a very close relationship between marmas and yoga and uh, it is one of the oldest science known because it is also mentioned in uh, Siddha very detailed. I have just mentioned the some of the highlights in Siddha literature where they have also considered 10 Vat. Although in Ayurveda we are considered as five main Vat types but uh, in Siddha there are 10 Vat and they are categorized into two that is primary Vayu and secondary Vayu. Primary Vayu are the same, which is mentioned or similar, which is mentioned in Ayurveda, that is Pran, Udan, Saman, Apan. Here they have used Abanan, instead we are using in Ayurveda Apan and Vyanan. So uh, this is the reference in Siddha science. However, besides this primary Vayu, again, they have the secondary Vayu described here in Siddha, that is Kurmam, Nagan, Girikiran, Devdattan, and Dhananjan. So they may, these may be, may be correlated with the ones which are uh, the secondary values described in uh, yogic literatures. Now, what is coming to what is marma therapy? So marma therapy is the art of stimulating the marma points exactly at the right time, place for rechannelization of energy yielding better energy flow and optimum therapeutic effects at physical, psychological, and spiritual levels. There are, there are uh, people saying, so now in Ayurveda, a lot of uh, critics say that how and where has Sushut mentioned that you should use these marmas for therapeutic purpose. Why should we be stimulating the marmas? Because as you saw in the previous slides, I mentioned that Sushut has mentioned Mari and Titi Marmani. So this was one of the points or one of the shlok which was used quite often by the critics and by saying that we should not be touching the marmas because it can lead to fatality. But because uh, Sushut has mentioned Mari and Titi Marmani. But uh, Sushut actually has mentioned that those symptoms can happen when there is severe injury. You know? but it's not like simple stimulation, gentle pressure, gentle touch will cause fatality because you see there are several references, uh, which several day-to-day -day practices we do in which we unknowingly stimulate the marmas. Also, there are many therapeutic interventions in Ayurveda that we do every day in which we do stimulate the marma. Like for example, when we are doing the Janu Basti, the Kati Basti, Hidai Basti, Shiro Basti, right? All of these procedures, uh, you are putting oil on this and on the head on, on the superior region. So here you have the Adipati Marm, when you are doing the Hidai Basti, that is the Hidai Marm. So of course the, the, the oil and the, 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 the medicine that is used, that they do produce its, their effect, but they, they are also stimulating the marma sites. So there are many, many Ayurvedic practices which we are doing every day in which the marmas are getting stimulated. Not only therapeutic procedures, like for example, some every day we put oil on our head, right? So when we are rubbing on the head, there are several marma sites on the head. So you are touching the marmas, but are we causing fatality for that? No, we're not because uh, the, 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 the touch is very gentle, right? And uh, so, when we suppose get tired and uh, feel our neck stiffness, then we put our head hand like this and stretch ourselves. Right. So, in the back, there are certain marma sites, which is especially the cricartica marm, which gets stimulated when we do it like this. So, unknowingly, we we do stimulate the marmas uh, and get therapeutic benefit. So, the the reference that Mariyanti iti marmani is in the context that there, if there is severe injury, so we all know that if there's any severe injury on the on the or heart, 
it can be fatal, yes. If any severe injury on the head region, it can be fatal. There's no doubt about it. But uh, gentle stimulation or gentle uh, is, uh, touch, gentle pressure does not cause uh, any any intervention, any, any uh, side effects, right? Of course, we have to know how to do. We have to follow a proper technique so that we do not cause injury on some, some vital structures, uh, maybe some vessel or nerve lying close by. So that we have to know. We have to take certain precautions for that. And even in socials, uh, they have mentioned that uh, here in one of the shlok, uh, that, uh, that they are mentioning about uh, certain dhupan dravya. That means uh, you have to do dhupan dravya with gugul, gugulu, agal, ral, agar, ral, vacha, shved, and so on. So these, are the, these are the herbs. And uh, Sushrut has mentioned that adhishetin sar samadhanavade. So here, make uh, from the same drugs, same herbs, make certain ghritta and apply that on pran sthan, right? And what is pran sthan? Sushrut has mentioned, teshu subhave visheshin pranaha tishthanti. So marmas are the pran sthan, besides, of course, the dash. Pranayatana. So we, we should, the reference of stimulation of marmas is there in our text social Sangita as well. Now coming to understand the probable mechanism of action, we can do that based on energy concepts, based on Tridosha concepts and based on modern parameters. So talk, we're talking about energy concepts. I will be discussing about the energy concepts here. So this is one of the very famous experiments by Professor Korotkov and team. And uh, I'm sure uh, many of you who are into yogic and energy science healing process, uh, you will be knowing about uh, these experiments, but still uh, it's a very important one. So I will share it here again, as I do in all my workshops. So what Professor Korotkov and team did was uh, they took a water droplet. So this, this uh, bluish drop that you see here is a water droplet before being energized. Okay. And then Korotkov uh, uh, asked an energy healer by the name Alan Shuma uh, to do conscious meditation and transfer his energy on the water droplet. So Alan Shuma did this uh, this conscious meditation. And after 10 minutes of that, the energy field of this water droplet was again mapped. And here it is written, the difference in the bioenergy glow is dramatic. The biocharged water has more than 30 times stronger aura vibration and significantly altered physical and biological properties. So if you can change the, the energy field of uh, water, you can change human energy biofield as well. And uh, this experiment actually showed on black and white paper the, the importance of uh, energy healing because marmas uh, are basically energy healing concept, right? So as is yoga, as is pranic healing, as is reiki, as is, uh, you can say, magnetotherapy, all of these, uh, the basis of all of these are is the energy concept. And uh, the, 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 there have been a meta-analysis uh, of this uh, energy concept of Professor Korotkov. And uh, you can see here, it's a very important paper and uh, very well explained here, the, the efficacy of uh, these experiments. We did some of our own. Uh, so these are some of the papers we have published. These are some of the PG thesis completed because uh, earlier, a lot of description in Ayurveda was about the marmas and anatomical concepts, okay? So there was not any thesis of, of clinical applications of marma therapy in uh, Ayurvedic post condition, right? So this is one of the first thesis uh, on clinical effect study of on effect of marma therapy in management of Pratham Patal Gattramit with special reference to myopia. And uh, uh, three theses I have named here, there's some which are already going on. And uh, there are now, now there are a lot of thesis work uh, different in universities going on in relation to marma therapy, right? Uh, earlier, there were not too many, but there were, there were a lot of 
thesis, especially in anatomy, but not in clinical aspects. Now, the, coming to some of the patients, I'm, I'm sharing a video here of one of the patient for the shoulder that had treated in Mexico. And this is, uh, you have to observe the range of movement of the upper limb, left hand, uh, left arm. Look, this one, I can put it, this one, not this one. So the facial expression, you can see a lot of pain. So raise it once more. Down, raise it once more. Okay. So this one, this limb is okay, but to this I one, mean, this, I, I she cannot do it. I feel a little uncomfortable, but mm -hmm. I do it anyway. Mm -hmm. okay. Now the other side, like this, she raise it like this. It, it, it seems like it's dragging me all, all this. The other one, do the other one. This is uh, the patient before treatment, and the second video that you will see here. So, this is the second video, I mean, which is immediately. Now I, can, I can do it very comfortable, I don't feel pain. Yes, yeah. so, so the lady I is can... saying that she doesn't feel any pain now after the therapy, same day. Although the extension is not complete, but uh, still much better than in the previous one. Do it. I don't feel any pain at all. I don't feel any because I feel like something was pulling me back. Earlier she was. She felt that something was uh, pulling her back, but now she's not feeling that. My nerve, or I don't know, but I don't feel any pain. Mm -hmm. It's like when you go to the gym, yeah. but. Um, <laughs> Look, I can move it. Yeah, we can move it more. So slowly. Uh, yeah. I mean, not like this. Mm -hmm. But I understand because we just yeah. do it. Mm -hmm. But I can move it. And I think that if I keep moving, I can do more. Yeah, it's increasing more. Uh -huh, more, <laughs> more. Yeah. I still. So there's one more case uh, treated in Singapore, and this is a case of hemiparesis. You can show it in the workshop. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, very much. So his uh, actually this is after this one is before. So this one I will see here first. This is the video. You have to see the range of movement. Uh, before the shoulder joint, it as before well as the surgery. You can keep it. Okay, lying down, he can raise up. Mm -hmm. So this is before, and now this one is after. So one moment more. You can show it in the workshop. <laughs> okay, can do it. Well, very much. So the range of movement, as you can see here, has improved even in case of. Hemiparesis. It is an old case, uh, three year old when I visited. So he was happy. <laughs> you can shoot. So the same thing happened in, in the, after the first sitting itself, you see. And this is another case uh, of macular edema. And uh, of course, when we I do these treatments uh, of eye, I do discuss with an eye specialist. My wife is an eye specialist, and shall luckily part with eye with. I do discuss with her. So this is one of the case uh, which uh, uh, which we did in uh, Italy, and uh, we can we saw the OCT. So the patient had a better, uh, or you can see decreased macular edema. The patient used to take uh, injections in the eyes and uh, had taken around five injections in the eyes, uh, but uh, uh, was not satisfactory enough uh, and after doing the mamas and a couple of ayurvedic medicines and ayurvedic procedure that i told him at that time uh, after three and a half months time when i visited him again in Italy, he, he came to pick me up and uh, and then since since then it's already been more than i think three years now and uh, uh, since then he has not needed to take any more injections uh, however i have such cases uh, only seven of such cases so i cannot generalize for every patient 
but uh, these uh, these are something which is very very difficult uh, to treat and uh, medical science actually is uh, a, a lot of uh, i think a uh, lot of options are still open to take care of these cases because uh, there's no specific known cure for this this is a case of uh, avian femur head and uh, you see that the bones of the femur head are degenerating here and this is a better one more smooth bone here but this is the bones of degenerating one and uh, this patient when had come to us i think 2013 x-ray right so at that time he was 36 years old so he told that uh, doctor please give me five years i don't want to go for surgery because he was advised to thr or total hip replacement but uh, uh, he did not want to go for surgery and uh, so he came to us and uh, we did the marmoth therapy and also gave him ayurvedic medicines and certain punch camera procedures and uh, it's already been you see around 10 years uh, so so this patient is uh, much better. He, is, uh, he started doing his work after just two to two and a half months of treatment, the initial ones. At the time when he had come, he had left his job. But uh, after that, he, uh, he, after two and a half months, he started working. He cannot do heavy work. He cannot run uh, for sure, but uh, he can do normal routine work. Uh, and he was uh, actually, he did start working eight to 10 hours of duty and even uh, now he is working his uh, regular duties he's doing performing without any surgery so far we have done a lot of workshops in different parts of the world this is in un headquarters in new york professor valdemar prado and he had invited this and wafunif is an organization based uh, inside the un headquarters the only ngo based inside un headquarters in new york This is in the University of Cologne, Germany, uh, in the nanotechnology department where we conducted our, our presentation on Marma's uh, applicability and the Indian Embassy, Tel Aviv. This is one of the best hospitals uh, in the world, I should say, Tel Hashomer Hospital. This is a government-owned hospital of Israel. And uh, I had to make a presentation on uh, manage, on use of Marma's uh, for post-trauma stress disorders, because you see there are many war trauma injuries there. So the doctor, Dr. Dori, the director there had told me that Dr. Prasad, can you show on a patient? So we did a live presentation and the doctors there were quite impressed with the effect because they saw the, 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 the effect uh, that the patient got and uh, the feedback that the patient gave was uh, quite impressive. Uh, so some of the best psychologists, uh, including the, this doctor, is a famous doctor uh, of acupuncture, and he's one of the best psychologists in uh, in Israel. And uh, Ofra was the one who had organized this uh, presentation. And in the Indian Embassy, hey, there are some of the presentations. So marmas are going on in different parts of the world more and more getting more and more popular because people are able to see the effects you see if you just talk and not give the effect then then there is no use so people are able to see the effect and uh, as uh, Sorupaji had mentioned in nepal we are doing this uh, for all the government medical officers in different batches uh, this is the honorable health minister of nepal and we recently had been to Kathmandu. Uh, nearly 450 government medical officers we are training and uh, uh, also around more than 1000 paramedics uh, in different batches will be training uh, for, uh, for the Nepalese government. Uh, so this is a patient in Singapore again of tennis elbow. She's just sharing her feedback. I was introduced. She's a very good friend too. To Marma uh, therapy early part of this year when I had a very uh, severe tennis elbow. And even with the regular physiotherapy sessions, I did not find any relief. And it just so happened, you know, a blessing in disguise, that I was introduced to this uh, session and I happily went thinking that I would be able to heal myself and others as well. 
and I, and I was really thankful that I was actually healed of my tennis elbow problem. So the lady had uh, gone to different uh, treatment modalities, but uh, the effect was not satisfactory. So I did the marmas and I taught her how to do, because you see the best part of marma therapy is that it can also be taught to an individual, to a common man, how to do. Of course, you have to see that the patient is doing correctly or not. So initially bring the ask the patient to come to us for at least four or five sittings and then follow up later. So I did uh, teach her and uh, she followed it up a few sessions and then she was completely okay with the tennis elbow, even now for more than two. So there are some sort of methods of stimulation of marmas, uh, like meditation and mantra, simple mantra and yoga and home, yoga asanas. There are many yoga asanas in which unknowingly the marmas get stimulated, pranic healing, reiki, magnetotherapy, aroma, acupressure, gati yantra, prakthamuk. There are so many uh, procedures in which marmas can be stimulated, alep and abhyang. In Varmam practices, especially, they are using Alep and Abhyang quite a lot to do the Varmam uh, stimulation. But Sushrut has said that Hastameva Pradhanatam Yantram, that our hands are the best instruments, and hence we use our hands for stimulation of Marmas. And when I teach about Marmas, the clinical applications of Marmas, I teach how to stimulate the Marmas by using our hands. I've taken just one disease here. What are the marmas that we do? So I've just taken tennis elbow and cold first elbow. So there are three marma points that we do in such patients. That is the ani, kurpar, and indrabasti of the upper limb. So if we come to know about ani marma, there are four marmas. It is a snayu or a vaikalekar marma. The size is ardhangul and it is located three finger breadth superior to the elbow crease anteromedial to the anterior midline of the arm. So if you can see in this figure, so this, uh, if you we draw a line on the elbow crease, right? And go three finger breadths above. So from this point, you go three finger breadths above, right? And one finger breadth medially. So this becomes the site of a stimulation of the Ani Mama. And uh, we use the, the pulp of the thumb to do the stimulation, right? So now the direction of pressure is also important in this case. So what we do is uh, make an imaginary line just posterior to the, to the anterior midline. So you can see posterior midline of the arm. And around this point, posteriorly, on the back around here, we will imagine a point and apply pressure from this direction towards that imaginary point. And uh, generally speaking, those marmas, which are considered as non-vascular, basically Acharya Sushrut has defined about five main marma types, that is mans, sira, snayu, asti, and sandhi. So mans that is more, which is more muscular, uh, sira that is more vascular, snayu that is more ligamentous or tendinous, asti that is more bony, and sandhi that is more joint in nature. So, uh, so those marmas which are vascular in nature, those marmas which are sira marmas, we have to take extra care when we do those stimulation. Those which are non-vascular in nature, then we use a moderate amount of pressure. The amount of pressure that, we're, that we apply on such marmas do vary. It's not like there's a set rule that uh, you have to apply this amount of pressure in all the marma sites. No, there's no such specific rule for that. However, what we can, if we want to generalize it, then the amount, then the amount of pressure on the sera marmas are much lesser and a moderate amount of pressure can be applied on the other four types. So the marmas that we are discussing today, none of them are uh, sira marmas, right? So we apply a moderate amount of pressure here, intermittent pressure, generally 20 to 25 times on non-vascular marmas. So here, 20 to 25 times in the same setting in which we, in the same rhythm in which we do uh, our breath in and out. 
So press when you exhale and release when you inhale. The next one, which is the Kur Parmarma. Kur Parmarmas are two. When I discussed about Ani Marm 4, that means there are two Marmas in the upper extremity and two in the lower extremity. So what I was talking about was uh, Marmas to the two Marmas of the upper extremity or the upper limbs. The num Kur Parmarmas, the numbers are two. And uh, it is a joint or a sandhi marma, and so vakalekar marma. The vakalekar is another sub classification of the marmas uh, which Sushrut has given. There they have mentioned about uh, the sadhya pranhar marma, the kalantar pranhar marma, vishalagna marma, vakalekar marma, and rujakar marma. So sadhya pranhar is that that if there is severe injury on those on sadhya pranhar marma, that it can lead to immediate fatality. And by immediate fatality, it means up to one week. And uh, if there is uh, hmm, a kalanta pranhar, then it can lead to delayed fatality up to one month. Then if it is uh, vishalagna, that means if the foreign body stays there, you don't forcibly try to take it out, then the patient will survive. If you try to forcibly take it out, then it can lead to fatality. The vacalekar is that, 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 that means if there is any severe injury on those, then it can lead to certain debility. And uh, rujakar is that, that means that if there is a severe injury, then it can uh, lead to uh, a lot of pain. So the uh, size of this skurpar marm is three angle. The location is one finger breadth downward from the elbow crease, both on the medial as well as on the lateral aspect. So if this is the elbow crease, you go one finger breadth down. And uh, if you draw an anterior midline on the forearm, then from the anterior midline, this is approximately three finger breadths, okay? So this is how we measure. And when we are talking about finger breadths, then it means that it is uh, a patient's finger breadth, not our own. Or in the individual, if we are doing self, then it is your finger breadth, not anyone else's, right? Because everyone's finger breadth varies. So if you want to know about the gist or the, the idea about what one finger breadth would be, then the best way to do that is uh, measure the base of the four fingers. So you measure the base of the four fingers and divide it by four. So that becomes one angle pramana. So here when I'm using one angle, so this distance, you measure the base divided by four. So that distance will be one angle. And from here, it's approximately three finger breadths. So once we have identified the location, and of course, this is the medial side. So that is uh, on the inner side of a stimulation and the other side is on the outer side of a stimulation. So as you can see here, again, this picture is more clear. So if this is an elbow crease and you go one finger breadth down, right? And once you have identified it, then use the inner part of the thumb to stimulate or give pressure an intermittent pressure towards the olecranon. So the bony prominent area that you see here is uh, olecranon. Okay, so intermittent pressure 20 to 25 times in one sitting. It is uh, in the initial times, there is a uh, slight tenderness or painful stimuli when you do it because there are certain nerves which are passing close by. That is why it can be tightly thin. So that is why one we must prognosticate our patient that uh, while stimulation of this side it can be painful. However, it will not be like it will continue forever, right? So the, once you do the stimulation, after the stimulation, you will also feel pain relief, for, especially if we are doing it in uh, in tennis elbow or or if we are doing it in cervical spondylitis, also we do this. Whether we do it in frozen shoulder patients, also. The one you saw earlier. So in such patients also, we do the scooper marma. 
if the patient is sensitive, then um, we should ask our patient to lie down and do it in the supine position. There are some mistakes that people do when doing the stimulation is uh, the direction of pressure is applied sometimes in, in this direction. However, the point of stimulation is the same, but if you apply pressure in this direction, then uh, the, the effect will not be good enough. Right, so the direction of pressure is important. See, basically the elbow, the whole of the elbow is considered as a marma side because Cooper is the elbow joint. However, clinically speaking, when it's not like we cannot be pressed on the whole of the elbow joint and we get the desired effects of our period of many years, we see that uh, these are the sites which we are mentioning here. If we apply pressure in this specific direction, then the effect is much better in patients. So there is a video which I'm going to share. This is the yeah, code permanent stimulation technique. It's the elbow joint. Mm -hmm. The elbow crease. Draw a line here and mark one finger breadth below this. Okay, this is on the lateral aspect, and then on the medial aspect, also similarly, make a line one finger breadth below this. One finger breath below on the lateral side. Okay, so these these two are the <laughs> these two are the four permanent. I'll place four fingers here for support and the thumb here. The internal aspect of the thumb I'll be using for stimulation of the four permanent. Listen, if you press this, there is my pain to the patient. So whenever uh, you are stimulating the four uh, permanent. We must uh, first prognosticate the patient that uh, there will be some um, mild pain that uh, will subside within, within a couple of minutes. like this. The direction of pressure is towards the uh, electron process. Or you can say inward. So this is how we do the cool permanent stimulation. Okay, so this figure depicts uh, the exact location. So from the elbow crease, we go three finger breadths above. So this distance is three fingers and one finger medially, right? So this becomes a site of the stimulation. So this is the anima. And again, from the elbow crease, if you draw a straight anterior midline, then uh, this distance is three fingers as it in here. And uh, this this distance that you see is one finger breadth. This is the lateral side, and similarly on the medial side or the inner side, the same three finger breadth distance and one finger breadth below. From the elbow crease, we go on the four finger breadths down in the anterior midline. So this becomes the, the third marma that we have to discuss, that is the Indrabhasti marma. Okay, so the patient is of uh, tennis elbow. So tennis elbow is basically lateral epicond like this. So we do the ani marm, the lateral side of kurpar marm is stimulation and the indrabhasti marm. If the patient is gold for his elbow, then we do this ani marm, the medial side of the uh, kurpar marm stimulation and the indrabhasti. So these three marmas that we do. 
So in regarding Indrabasti marm, it is mentioned that there are two in number. It is a man's marm and the size is Ardhanguli. So we can also do the measurement of the Indrabasti marm in this way, where we place the thumb on this uh, wrist crease and extend the index finger, the point at which the index finger reaches, that is the site of a stimulation of the Indrabasti marm. So if it is uh, uh, a very bulky or muscular body, then we need to use two thumbs to do the stimulation. Otherwise, if we uh, a normal person or, or a sensitive person, then even one hand, one hand thumb, one thumb can be used. When you're doing the self therapy, we're actually using only one thumb to do the stimulation. The direction of pressure is directly downwards in such case. So it's quite easy to do. And it's not much tender when we do the stimulation. So not painful at all. So there's a good cool marm, and there's one more perm marma, which is actually the, uh, and the ankle joint. Uh, so that those two marma sites stimulation are painful initially, but it's also give a lot of pain relief and uh, <clears throat> other th therapeutic benefits. Uh, so we cannot just skip that. These are some of the diseases uh, I have mentioned, the, num the name of the marmas that we do, some common ones. So I've mentioned in osteoarthritis knee, we are using four marmas, the Chepra, Gulf, Janu, and Indrabasti. In low back pain patients, uh, we're using these uh, five marmas. In uh, Ardha Bedak, we are using these uh, migraine headaches, frozen shoulder, we are using these tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, cervical spondylitis also, Kulparma, as you can see here, we are using cervical spondylitis. And there's one more marma, actually, Krikatika marma. Also, we do this uh, in cervical spondylitis, especially if the pain is radiating more towards the occipital region. And it is, these are in general because, you know, depending upon the patients, one can increase or decrease the number of marmas. Uh, but these are in general speaking terms that we are using these uh, uh, more often. Now coming to some of the general principles of marma therapy, treat a patient as you would like yourself to be treated. Patient should be placed in lying down and sitting position. Don't ever do it in standing position. Fingernails should be cut. Do not give pressure using any objects such as wood. There are people who use wood or other objects to do the stimulation. I don't say that they are doing wrong. They have their own, own uh, benefits. So I don't say that they're doing wrong. It is just that I'm not using it and hence I'm not advocating it. Okay, but uh, it can be used, especially when you see the people in acupressure, acupuncture, they are using the uh, word quite often. So it's fine with them, yeah. It can be used in conjunction with other pathies, like suppose, suppose somebody is taking uh, anti-hypertensive medicines, like, so it's not like you have to withdraw the medicines and then only start the murmurs. It can be done in conjunction, right? So that's one of the advantages of it. Wear a slipper, stand on a wooden floor. Do consider yourselves as a learner at all stages to uh, avoid any addictions or non-vegetarian diet. The practitioner can stimulate the marma in sitting or standing postures. Keep a close watch on the vitals of the patient. Observe facial expression while stimulating the marmas. Do not talk while stimulating the marmas. Again, one of the common mistakes, especially when doing an OPD. So one, at one patient, we are doing the stimulation and the other, uh, we are talking that, okay, what are your complaints? So. <laughs> that should not be done. Do not talk while stimulating the marmas because what we're doing is trying to focus our energy or transfer the energy on, on the patient while opening up their channels so that there's a better energy flow in them. Size and distances are measured in Angul Praman. Some marmas are better than empty stomach, but not all. The technique of marma stimulation, rate, rhythm, pressure varies as per the type of marma, patient's disease condition, prakriti, sattva, age, etc. Some of the precautions of marma therapy, adequate pressure is, needs to be done. It is okay to apply lesser pressure, but not okay to apply more pressure. Avoid during pregnancy, especially the lower extremity marma. There are certain marmas which we do in pregnant ladies uh, also, that is fine. But once you are more used to the, the to the therapy, then you can do that, right? But otherwise, in the initial practices, it's better to avoid in pregnant ladies. Extra care is needed in treating marmas of head and neck. Avoid initially for cardiac or DVT patients. We are doing in cardiac patients also, but uh, for the beginners, I'd say that it's better to avoid. 
Positioning of the patient is important. Keep a watch on the vitals, BP, pulse, respiration rate, and it should be done under expertise initially. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, doctor, for this insightful, uh, enlightening uh, session. So any questions? Probably, uh, I think, uh, so that is very easy uh, to take a lot of questions. So at least a couple of questions you can uh, you can take it up. So in case if somebody has any questions, you can please feel free to ask him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, excuse me, sir. May I? Okay. My, sir, so my yes. name is sorry. Uh, uh, my name is Padmaja. Padmaja. You want to ask something? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, recently, uh, I uh, learned uh, basic and advanced marma. Uh, yeah, as you said that a pregnant uh, for a pregnant woman one not to practice, but uh, re, and in Garbha Samskara, actually, I am learning the some uh, course actually Garbha Samskara. So she is telling that one of the uh, um, the Marma teacher told that we can practice, but uh, but which is correct, correct which is true, we are well, a little bit confusing, no, sir. What I said is you can one can practice. I am also practicing in pregnant ladies, right? But. Yeah. In the since I'm talking for the beginners, and uh, so uh, I say that for the beginners, it's better to avoid, right? Because they have to, there are certain marmas which need to be avoided in case of pregnant lady. There are, set, there are certain marmas, for example, there are marmas in the head, so they can be pregnant practiced even in pregnant ladies. Not all marmas, but there are many marmas in the head which can be practiced in pregnant ladies. There are hither marm just a gentle touch of stimulation, so that can be practiced. But you see, the Nabi Marm, there's a specific type where you have to do a pressure kind that you cannot do. Vitap Marm, which is lying nearby the, in, or you can say the mid of the ilioinguinal ligament. So there you cannot do, right? So there are certain Marmas uh, which can be practiced and certain Marmas which needs to be avoided. And that is why for the beginner, I say that it's better you don't uh, do it in pregnant ladies. Uh, start practicing more with the other ones. And then once you, once you get more knowledge and once you get more used to it, then you can practice in other cases, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sir. So thank you. Actually, uh, a lot of things I learned recently through Varma, sir. So we are happy to having you all, uh, teachers, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Actually, yeah. you people are protecting our ancient uh, methodology. Thank it's you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Scott's good. Yeah. Okay, Vinay. So I think. Uh, uh, I think so, sorry. Uh, one more last question. Actually, uh, that uh, suppose uh, at first we learned, but uh, uh, though we are confident to treat, but um, maybe some people may ask, do you have any doctor certificate? Why you are treating this? Uh, actually, one of the doctor asked me that. So what should I? The See, now, the, now, now the CCRS, uh, the uh, government of India has launched a Marma Chikitsa book. So we just have to tell that if, even if you go on the uh, government of India's uh, health website, so there are references of... Uh, right, any Marma last problem, one more question. Diseases you need to My see. internet is a little unstable today. Okay. So, I yeah. <laughs> Understand, sir. So you have those many references are there now. The various universities, even in NI National Institute of Ayurveda, there is one. In our university, there is a Marma class uh, uh, certification course going on. With for first batch will be joining soon. So uh, and in Parul University, there are many things which is being uh, done. So in Kuru Chetra University, there are PG thesis is being done. In Paprola, uh, the PG thesis is being done. Uh, they have all passed through ethical committee credentials. So, so yes, there so are many, certification, many, yeah. le learning certification, sir. That uh, exam passed the certificate. There is two different because we got only uh, learned uh, certification. 
I do the online courses also through my foundation. I do provide the course completion certificates as well. But uh, at a university level, if you want, then uh, Uttarakhand Ayurveda University has recently introduced this course. So mm -hmm. you can find uh, that also. It's open to BMS, BUMS, BHMS, and BYMS. So all Ayush Prati systems you can. Uh, it's open so any levels, all. sir? Only two levels are there? Any other levels in the in this? Certification and diplomas. So you please have to go to the website also. Sure, sure, sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, Vinay. Uh, thank you so much uh, for inviting, and uh, it's been a great pleasure. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all the participants because without the participants, no. Talk is good to learn. Thank you, yes. everyone, for being here. It's been a great pleasure. Thank you, sir. Rupa. Thank you so much. Thank you. Rupa, you can go ahead. Thank and you, sir. Take over. Thank you so much. So, good evening, everyone. I extremely feel happy and honored to give this vote of thanks on behalf of Yoga Vignana Foundation. I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Shishir Prasad for giving in your valuable time to educate us about marma and prana, the concepts and clinical applications. So today's session was excellent. We were actually wondering how this complex topic is going to be understood by us. By the explanation that you gave us was very helpful. You also stated some patient testimonials and how they felt after the Merma therapy. So that was really exciting. So you also focused on uh, Marmas for curing certain ailments, which medical science has still not figured out uh, the medicine, we can say. So the principles of Marma therapy, uh, self-Marma, and how fingers can be used to stimulate these Marma therapy. So all these are uh, really unknown to us and you've brought and given so much of light to that. So your insights about the uh, primary vayu, secondary vayu, and some stimulating points at right time and right place for rechannelization. So there were some new terms that we also learned like the uh, Kurupa Marma and its points, all of those. So finally, I would like to conclude that this session was very interesting and very informative. It has opened up a whole new array for us to learn or seek for something deep, uh, you know, digging through this Marma topics. Thank you for make, making that as an eye opener for us. Thank you so much, Dr. Uh, Shishir Prasad for joining us today. And uh, I would like to inform all the people who have been a participant here because without whom this would not have been possible. So thank you so much for all your time. And uh, on behalf of Yoga Vignana Foundation, we would want contribution from your side as such wonderful informative sessions can keep happening um, as and when the time permits. So thank you participants and thank you Vinay for organizing such a wonderful event. The talk about Pranam Brahma and this was really exciting for all of us. So we would look forward More such talks in future. Please do come up with a wonderful topic like this. And I would go back to all our participants, uh, all our speakers who have been a part of this complete Pranam Brahma talk. So from the beginning, I would like to thank Dr. Ananda Balayoki Bhavanani. Dr. Vidwan, Dr. M. A. Alwar, Dr. Mohan Raghavan, Dr. Shishir Prasad. So thank you so much and namaste. Thank you. Thank you very much.